Well hello again and welcome to the VK6CS Amateur Radio Channel. I've just got a, I've got, uh, got some VHF, UHF uh, diplexes just to, uh, to compare. I've got them connected to the Roden Schwartz. Got a 500 meg span on there. Center frequency is 250 megs. And at the moment it's connected to the 2 meter port. And uh, there's a termination on the UHF port. So that's the response. As you can see, it's nice and flat at the top, all along there. Uh, for the VHF portion of it, the center, the center frequency there is 250 megs, so it starts falling off at 250. And where that marker is, where that blue line is, you can see that frequency and the amount of attenuation here. So that's 427.6 megs. And there's minus 69, uh, neg 69, um, neg 70 dBm of attenuation, or dB of attenuation. So it's not quite, um, it would be really good if this dip here was on uh, 433 megs, which is where the sort of input to the repeaters are. Um, if I move it up to 433 megs, there we go, it's 432.6. You can see there's sort of neg 68 there. So it's, um, it's a couple of dB worse than it was at the, uh, the, bottom, of the um, bottom of the response curve there. Um, but, you know, there's still plenty of attenuation there, so that's, uh, that's not bad. Um, if I move the marker along uh, to 146 or whatever, Uh, might not do 146 now. So if I move it along to you know 145.1, um, it says that the uh, the attenuation through it is uh, minus 0.55 dB. It's not actually as bad as that because um, just with the uh, the test instrument and the leads, it's uh, minus 0 0.4. So that's actually 0 0.15 or 16. So that's that's not too bad at all. So the through throughput attenuation is uh, is nice and low, and the attenuation at 70 sems is nice and high. Now this is one that I tweaked, if I remember rightly. It, um, uh, the actual response out of the box was uh, was not quite as good. So <coughs> I, uh, I I tweaked it. But uh, there's no adjustments inside it, so I had to move coils and, and you know open and close things, and then put the lid on. It changes again. So the fact that it's there, I reckon, is um, uh, is uh, is pretty good. Would have been an awful lot of fiddling around to uh, get that to 433 megs. Okay, I'm just going to pause it because I'm using the old camera, and I'll show you the um, uh, the UHF path through it. Okay, so now I've uh, I've got the uh, uh, the test instrument connected to the uh, the VHF port. Uh, sorry, the UHF port, <laughs> and you can see that um, at one hundred and forty-five point one megs, it's minus seventy-one. Uh, it's got a nice uh, nice big dip in the response there, and um, if I move the marker along. Up to 400 and 430, 443, 435. There we go. So at 435, it's showing uh, minus 1.13. There we go. You sub subtract uh, 0 0.4 from that. So the throughput attenuation is pretty good, and the attenuation at two meters is uh, is pretty good. Um, it's. Uh, I don't think for the, this sort of device it's going to get any better than that, to be honest. Um, minus 71 dB at uh, 145.1 megs. Okay, so I'm just going to pause the camera and uh, see what difference removing the termination, because I've got a 50 ohm termination on the unused port, on the VHF port at the moment. I'm just going to remove that termination and see what difference it makes to the response. And there we go. 
So that's, that's how different the response looks with the termination removed. Now at 145.1 megs, we've got neg 73, neg 74 dB of attenuation. So there we go, that looks fine. Now this is the one I tweaked because I think out, out of the box this one wasn't, wasn't so flash. Now I do have two others here. Uh, one is a brand new Andrews one. And we've got another one here that um, I think this one's actually quite old but I'm not sure it's ever been used. Okay, so we're just going to compare these two with the, uh, with the twiddled one and just see how different the uh, response is. Okay, so I'm just going to pause it again. Okay, back again. Now, this is the Andrews MX2 Diflexer and I've got the, uh, um, the instrument actually connected to the uh, VHF port at the moment. I <laughs> should have just looked at the screen. <laughs> okay, so Got a nice big dip in the response there. Let's see where that is. Move the marker along. Okay. Yeah. So there we go. That's the sort of thing that I saw. I think it was actually on the on the MFJ one. I think it was. Um, I think it was around 350 or 360 megs. Here we can see that the Andrews one has the. Uh, has the nice sweet spot in the response uh, on uh, 390 megs, an egg 74 and 75. So let's just see where, see how much attenuation it's actually got at 400 and 433, something like that. 432.6. There you go. 432.6. It's an egg 51. So that is not as flash, and you can see where that vertical blue line is, that's the marker, that's where 432 megs is, uh, 432.6 megs is. So that's, you know, that's not great really, to be honest. That's straight, that's completely unmolested, straight out of the uh, little plastic bag that it comes in. I've actually had this for a long time, so I don't know whether the newer ones are uh, any better. But um, Okay, so I'll pause that and I'll connect it to the uh, UHF port. Okay, back again. And now uh, just having a look at the uh, attenuation on VHF. And you can see there's very little uh, throughput attenuation um, on, uh, on UHF. If I just change that to 400 and 432 megs, there we go. So the throughput attenuation on uh, on UHF is uh, minus 1.07 dB. Remember, we've got uh, minus 0.4 as a reference level, so it's not quite as bad as that. And let's see where the nice big dip over here on VHF is. So if we move the marker along to here, look around the camera to get the sweet spot. There we are. Mmm, so that, 115.1 megs, neg 86, yeah, over neg 80 there, that's really good, that's a nice, uh, nice dip, it's a shame it's not in the right place really, um, so if you put it on 146, uh, 145.1, there we go, 145.1, we've got neg 46, so, and you can see where the, the vertical line for the marker is there, just there. So that's well off of the uh, the nice dip in the uh, nice dip in the response. So it's not very well set up at all. This uh, this diplexer. And this is the yeah, this is the focus MX72 diplexer. It's got Andrews written on the bag. I'm guessing that's where it came from. I've actually got two of these that are identical. Uh, well, the bags are and the units are. I haven't tested the other one. So, uh, so there we go. So that's the response of that one, uh, the MX72. I'll just pause it and um, take the termination off the unused port. Okay, so I've taken the termination off the unused port. 
and uh, there's the change in response. Is this thing in focus? Okay, so if we go to there, come on camera, don't let me down there, there we are, 145.1, we've got NEG 60. So with the other port, with the unused port unturbinated, it's actually better. It's actually got better attenuation. Of course, that's not how you'd connect it, because normally um, the, the whole idea of having a diplexer is that you have, uh, you know, two, uh, um, uh, two terminations on it. Two antennas on it, probably. Um, I don't think I'd be too keen to connect two radios to this particular uh, diplexer. Okay, so again, that's the EMX the MX-72. Righto, so uh, <clears throat> let's try the third one. Okay, so now I've got the CDX DI540 connected. Now this is uh, another VHF UHF diaplex, so this one actually belongs to Al VK6KIF. This one is unmolested. And looking at the response here, you can see there's the there's the uh, the low point there in the response, but that is 400.1 megs. We've got neg 60 there. So if I move that along to uh, 430, 432 megs. Oh come on, focus. 432.6 megs. You can see there's neg 57 there. Neg 57. And uh, if I move it along, if I move it along to. There we go, 145. There we go. 145.1 megs. We've got 0 0.48 uh, dB. And uh, it's very low insertion loss because we've got. Our reference level is uh, minus 0 0.4. Remember, so there we go. So that's the uh, that's the response for the CDX five uh, DI540. So I'm just going to um, put the um, uh, the test instrument on the UHF port, and we'll see how that looks. Okay, and here we are. So <clears throat> at 145.1 megs, we have NEG 66 um, dBm of attenuation, which is which is not bad, really. That's not bad. So the attenuation, uh, as far as uh, 70 cents goes, is not terribly good. Um, again, I don't think I'd be inclined to put uh, two radios on this particular diplexer. It'd be better to use for uh, you know one radio, two antennas. Um, Okay, I'll just uh, I'll just pause it again. Just a reminder, that's this one. I'll just pause it again, and uh, I'll take the t termination off the unused port and just see what that does to the response. Hmm. I don't quite know what's happened to my uh, standby. Okay, back again. Well, I don't know what's happened to this camera. It's not producing any vision at all. Um, so anyway, I'll thank you for watching. Um, I'll just tell you that the DI540 response did change and that um, you know, it shifted the notch up to 162.6 megs and gave uh, much better attenuation with the, uh, with the termination removed, which is of course not how you'd, how you'd use it. And you certainly wouldn't be using it on 162.6. So just out of curiosity, I'm just going to move the cursor along. You're going to have to take my word for it. I'm afraid I don't know what's happened to this bloody thing. And at 145, it's showing neg 61, so, you know, it's sort of fairly similar. Okay, well, as always, thanks for watching. I'll, uh, I'll catch you next time. In the meantime, I'll go and drop this in the dustbin.